A lot of times we've heard this saying that there is nothing new under the sun. Because what it really means is that there is nothing that we are seeing now that is new. Something like this has happened and people have sorted it out. So if somebody can sort it out, so can we. In April to July 1994, we've heard of the story of Rwanda, but let me just show you what happened. On April 6th, they woke up to a loud sound. The plane which the president was on was shut down. Anarchy broke out in town. Tutsis were being killed by Hutus, who were thinking. And by words, the country went into turmoil. In 100 days, 1 million people were killed. Genocide had taken over the system. One million people killed in a hundred days. The population of this country is just 11 million. Possibility is not a function of size. It's a function of the mind. But look now from 1994. Leadership decided to reconstruct this town. They built everything. Everything, even from nothing. They were able to create something. There is possibility where you are. They had this tribal war, which is Tutsis and Hutus. On radio, prior to that, almost a year, they have been calling the Tutsis cockroaches. And the cockroaches must be killed. So what happened was that they said on this particular day that the revolution will start. So when they did that, nobody knew that over one million machets were already sent in to Rwanda and were waiting for distribution. So on that day, they are distributed and they carried out. So that means if a man who is a Tutsi, a, a Tutsi marries a Hutu, you have to kill your wife or kill your husband and your children because they said they must clean the slate for 90 days one million people were killed in 1994 not many years ago every single one of you was born it is something that happened in this africa but 25 years after 25 years in short less than 25 years Rwanda is known as the fastest growing African economy. Their population is still under 12 million. Now, if you look at the picture behind, the, the last one there, you will see that there are some expatriates that are taking a picture of a gorilla. The only money that they make in that place is through bananas and tourism. There is no oil in that country, no oil. If they need petrol, they need to export and import from Congo. They were able to go. So to go and see that gorilla, you will pay $1,500, almost 500,000 Naira to go and see gorilla in the bush. And when you get there, you will walk one and a half kilometer. It is not that the gorilla will come to you. You are the one that will go there and catch this gorilla. So how come this same VM town that was a place of death and pain and cry and everything suddenly is where everybody in the world wants to go to as of today a small city with only 50,000 fishermen 1960 1970 sand everywhere there's no vegetation anywhere none it is desert only 50,000 people that is the creek there that's their water so people just catch fishes. In short, in 1985, they leased what they call wet lease, two aeroplanes, two, two aeroplanes. And then they rented it from Pakistan Airlines to start their airport in 1985. 
Nigerian Airways, our own national carrier, started in 1958. Stay with me. I'm, you see, I, I didn't come here to make you laugh. I, I, want, I want you to think. So, this is their market. But if you make the mistake, which I encourage every single one of you to go to, go to Dubai now. That their airport there on the right, this whole thing here is airport. They have 250 planes. The biggest plane in Nigeria is called the 777. There, it is like recharge car. That is their airport. The population of Dubai, indigenous, is only 240,000 people. They are not even as much as Alausa population. That is their network. And this place we are looking at is a desert. So the question I would ask you, remember this is a desert. The other one, they had genocide. If within 30 years, they can correct all this, what happened to us? in West Africa. What happened to us in Nigeria? So you will always ask yourself, what happened? Is it because of their location? No. Somebody is in a desert. But if you go to their bedroom, water is pouring every, anyhow. You don't have any building as tall as the one in Dubai, here in Nigeria. Dubai has the tallest building in the world right now. The Burj Khalifa, no other building is at all in the desert. Is it the weather? The heat in Dubai, you can't come out. But here, people are functioning. Are you talking about resources? Nigeria's oil is more than Dubai's resources. Rwanda doesn't even have oil. They don't. They only sell banana. Is it the color of their skin? Tell me. As black as a Rwandi is, so are we. What happened to them? Leadership happened to them. Leadership is not an office. Leadership, it is the, is the acceptance of a responsibility. That's what leadership is. Because when you think that you're a leader because you have an office, no. Leadership is accepting responsibility. Responsibility with your skills, understanding how to be accountable. You are competent for the task. You can motivate the people. You are able to plan teamwork. Give support when there's, and you have the influence of power to ensure that even in communication, everybody understands that's what leadership is. Leadership is not for you to win an election. It is one thing for you to win an election, it's another thing to you, for you to do the election. It's another thing. Africa has over 1.2 billion people. We are rich on every side rich 55 countries. West Africa, West Africa is 340 million people. 340. By 1940, when they were dividing Africa, the blue were the French people. I mean, the blue were the British people. The red are the French people. The purple are the Spanish people. The yellow are the Portuguese people. Then you have the German, the green people. So you can see how they shared Africa. How do we, that on our right hand side, here, you have people that are speaking as much as French, on top French, beside French. Our neighbor in Kutonu French. Our neighbor on the other side, um, um, Cameroon are French. On top of us, they are French. How do I communicate? You man, the man is as black as me, but yet I cannot communicate with him. And look at how rich Africa is, with all the resources on all sides. We don't take time to understand this for a long time. I dare say that currently, all the 17 Francophone nations, all of them put together, 
is only 194 million. Nigeria right now is more than them. Put all these 17 countries. We are more than them. More. But because they are a nation, their vote alone. One nation, one vote. So your number is an issue. Stay with me. Life is about impact, not about statistics. There's a saying that says that there is no smoke without fire. You have all heard about it, right? No smoke without fire. A lot of us also know that it is not the fire that kills people, it's the smoke. The fire only burns you, but the smoke will, will just choke you. So, if that is the case, then sea robbery, illegal bunkering, on terrorism, internet fraud, public vandalization, kidnap and ransom, yahoo yahoo, whatever, courtism in school, all that one is smoke. All is smoke. So, King, if you are saying that all this one is smoke, where is the fire? Because it is the fire that brought us here today. Okay, I will talk. During the election, they mobilize boys, students, youth, and then they give you 2,000 naira, and they say that, vote for me. You wear t-shirt, carry rice, walk on the road, oh, come back. After four years, they give you another 2,000 naira. What they did not tell you is that your value in one year, divide 2,000 by four, one regime is 500 naira. A whole you, your whole swagger, you are worth only 500 naira. A year is 12 months. Divide 500 by 12, is 41 naira, 67 kobo. In one day, your value is 1 naira, 39 kobo. That's your value. When you collect that money, you have sold your best right. So when you sell, when you collect that money, you don't have any right to talk. Because what it means there is that when they call us Niger Delta Avengers, call us political juggernauts, call us thugs, it is because we have political Avengers in power. These people now break their heads, they mobilize thugs to fight people over it. Look at different elections in Africa. Because we have sold our birthright. That is the reason, the fundamental of everything. But let's look at leadership. Sheikh Zahid bin Sultan Al Nahar, the past president of UAE from 1966 to 12, this place was a desert. 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 They used to live in tents, not houses, tents. He said women constitute 50% of every society or country's population. Any society or country that does not allow their women to be literate or express themselves loses 50% of that society's country's potential. When you ignore our women, when you push down our women, when you put them to the backside, you lose 50% of your potential. 50% automatically. The strongest city, society, you will ever meet is not the one that has the most resources and security, but a strong society is the one that knows what to do with what it has and allows everybody to play their role effectively. That is what leadership is all about. You know what people have, but you can carry that, you bring it up. Now, my uncle, his name is Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the vice president of UAE, said by Twitter on October 17, October 19, uh, 2017, that look, he's going to announce the names of, of ministers by Twitter by 5 p.m. He sent out this tweet by 3 p.m. He said in his tweet written in Arabic, so on social media, said he will reshuffle a cabinet to represent a a renewal of blood, a catalyst for change, and a preparation for the next stage of the nation's plan. This man was 64 years old when he made this announcement. He appointed one of my friends, Oman Bil Sultan, Al Olama, 27 year old boy, made the boy the Minister of Artificial Intelligence. What was the boy's description? That he should plan how Dubainians will live in planet Mars in the year 2117. Okay, hold on, you didn't get it. This man is 27 years old. His appointment was in 2017. He is to plan how Dubanians will live in planet Mars in the year 2117, 100 years in advance. If you add 100 years to this man, this man will not be alive. He will be 127 by that time. The president that appointed him is 64 years old. If you had 100 years, that man will not be alive. He will be 164. They were not thinking of the next election. They were thinking of the next generation. 100 years of planning. If your plan and aspiration is to buy a car today, you are thinking poor. 
We read that we saw in Rwanda. Rwanda was thinking about their children. They began to rebuild in 25 years' time. They have crossed the road. They are not buying new cars or new street. No, 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 no. No. They now put women in power. They appointed the woman of state for happiness, not what they did in one state in this country. They appointed the woman. Her own is to check the global happiness index. That was why, because they found out that all the states in the Middle East, all the countries in the Middle East, they were having problems. So they decided, how do we make our, our people happy? They appointed this woman. So what they did is they came up with ideas, with concepts, with imagination. The, on the road, they have it. A policeman will stop you. And if you are driving well, they'll put a sticker at the back of your car. That means you are driving well in Dubai. There is no way any policeman will see that sticker on your car and they will, and, and they will stop you because you, you are following their pattern. If somebody gives you that recognition, Will you drive fast again? They will teach you. That's how you, you lead with strategy. But what do we have in Nigeria? I raped my daughter to test my manhood. It's on newspaper everywhere. Another one said, 47 year old man, the five children in school. 47 year old man. That's how they worship women here. But here, Califast, South. They, what did they do? They were able to push and make a satellite in Arabic and launch it to space. And everybody that was involved in that project was between 23 to 27 years old. Young boys and young girls built a satellite. What are we doing here? We're sending message to Instablog, Instagram, taking selfie. People are thinking about tomorrow thinking about to me. Young boys and young girls, what are we thinking about? Remember, you cannot grow beyond your imagination. Our problem is not our location. Our problem is our thinking. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be second class citizen. I refuse to be intimidated. It is what you agree you have. <laughs> can think enough, what you have is more than enough. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish and subdue. Build this whole earth. Pain is the down payment for gain. If you are still satisfied in that face may start to out, so be it. Prepare for disruption. Incation is loading. How hungry are you? Come on! I can't you on me, people in the house. Stay like I'm who? 2020. Bigger and better. Do not be left out.